Right, now we're going to do a watercolour sketch of this uh, pencil drawing because I thought it'd be quite nice if you saw that the whole thing coming through from a blank sheet of cartridge paper through the pencil drawing and to a full colour finished item. I'm going to use two brushes, the number 10 round and also the half inch flat brush which are smaller versions of what we looked at in volume 1. Now for the paints we're going to use light red as a base colour for the horse's body and then I'm going to bring in some burnt umber and also I'm going to add a few touches of ultramarine to the mix. Oh and I mustn't forget we've got a touch of permanent rose to water it down for the pinky colour on the end of the horse's nose. Right now I'm getting a good brush load of light red because I'm going to put this on the whole of the horse's body as a base colour. Now you can't afford to hang around with paint on cartridge paper because it does dry fairly quickly and if you're a bit slow and too deliberate about it you'll end up with tired marks and hard edges. So I'm moving it around quite quickly. Now you can see that that same brush load is still enough there on the brush to get the horse's face done and the ears as well. But what I'm going to do now is bring in some of the light red into the burnt umber and just a touch of the ultramarine blue. And that's going to give us the main colour for the horse's body. You can see I've already put it on the chest and on the front legs here. And I'm going to keep in those quite damp and fluid. I'm doing that on the back leg. You can see I'm leaving the hooves and the feathered part of the bottom of the leg white for now. Right, now I'm just doing a little bit of that more of that colour on the under part of the belly, which is obviously going to be in a shadow area, but in that area there, with, I'm pointing out with the paintbrush, I'm going to lighten that off as we come up the side of the horse, really, to next to nothing, so that the light red becomes the main colour of the horse where it's catching the light. Now, I'm adding here almost neat ultramarine blue because I want to get a really dark shadow underneath that collar around the horse's uh, chest and I'm letting the ultramarine blue flow into the wet brown paint here like that just get a drop more of it just another touch right now that's gonna go in and I'm just letting that run together itself that's a real wet in wet technique just going to add a little bit more of that colour to the top part of the leg but at the same time I'm just leaving a very tiny line to define the shape of the leg against the body. Right now just I've been looking back and forward at the photograph and what I've done here and somehow I've managed to miss a fairly significant piece of the harness over the horse's back. What I've decided to do is to add this as we're going along. Again it's a mistake on my part but these things happen and hopefully you'll learn from what I've done wrong. While we've got hold of the flat brush I'm just going to do a little bit of work around the horse's hooves with, with a little bit of that grey colour I've talked about where I've mixed a bit of burnt umber and a little bit of ultramarine blue. But what I can do here is give an impression of those long flowing hairs that are so characteristic of the heavy horse. And while I'm at it I'll add a little bit of a slightly stronger version of the same colour for the horse's tail which you just see hanging down the back. Now you can see that I'm doing this quite light compared to other bits of grey that I've used because I may want to go over this with some darker shading in a moment or two. Now in the same way I'm just going to add a hint of the horse's mane just flicking across here. Now you notice I've left little flecks of white which look like little highlights on the horse's mane. Right now I'm taking some of that dark colour out that I put in previously to give me a nice graded rounded effect of the belly of the horse. 
Now we're going to get another little bit more of this grey. You can see I'm just pulling a little bit ultramarine blue, a little tiny dash of burnt umber, and you can see what sort of a grey you get. If you add a bit more burnt umber, you get a browny grey. Come back to the blue, and bring it back to the bluey grey. Now I've made it a bit too thick, so we'll get a bit more water in to make it into a, a lighter bluey grey. Now I'm just using that to start with on the right hand side of the white blaze on the horse's face just to give a three dimensional effect. Now with cartridge paper you can't play around with it too much. There's a limit to how much you can put paint on and then take it off again. Much less so than you can with a decent watercolour paper. And you see I've put a lot of quite wet, it's still wet there now, a lot of dark brown and blue paint and just let it sink there and because it's graded out it gives that nice graded effect as we've achieved here and here where we want deep shadow gradually coming up into the light. It's a simple technique and we'll go through that many times as we go through the course in all sorts of different types of landscape features but that's how it works. Now, a tiny amount of the very light grey for this white part of the, of the feathers on the hooves as they're called. We leave a little residue of light grey which, <coughs> which will dry back almost clear but subtle enough to be able to see that it's not pure white. Now, I never actually intended to paint this picture originally. It was just going to be a sketch, but when I finished drawing it, I must admit I couldn't resist the, the temptation. So I hope that's been useful to you, that if it inspires you to have a go yourself, then it's been worthwhile. Do please keep having a go, because it is very, very satisfying once you've produced your first painting of an animal, especially a horse, because as I said earlier, it's the sort of thing that people look at and think, oh I can't paint a horse. I'm just going to add, add the blinkers there now, that helps as well to define the horse's face and the shape of it. Right, I'm going to stop there now, otherwise I know full well I'm going to fiddle this to death. It's only a little watercolour sketch. And as a quick demonstration sketch, I'm quite pleased. Now, you've also seen here that it's quite possible to paint on cartridge paper. And incidentally, this is 200 gram cartridge paper. Not quite as thick as uh, Bockingford watercolour paper, but thick enough to put some reasonably liquid washes on. But I do hope you have a go at this yourself, because I remember the first time I painted a horse after I'd sketched it correctly and I was so delighted that I thought I'd got it right. But that's part of the fun of watercolour. What you think is brilliant one day, if you keep practising and practising, you'll look back in a few weeks or a few months time and you'll realise just how far you've progressed by comparing what you're doing currently with what you've done previously. So that's another, uh, so that's another lesson. Never throw anything away that you've produced it's always going to serve a useful purpose in the future, if only to remind you how much progress you're making.